In this video, I'm going to be speaking to someone who is setting up an accelerator blockchain project. That's right, an accelerator blockchain project. We're going to find out what it is and what opportunities there are for you to get involved in this. Now, if you want to preserve your security and your privacy, go check out the Apollo wallet, which I think is the most secure wallet going. Use my affiliate link for a discount. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Hey, everybody, this is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits, and with my friend James Bull, formerly, and I still think currently, of James Crypto Bull channel, YouTube channel. And we're going to be finding out about Walk.io, which is a a project that he's setting up now before i introduce him please subscribe follow me on twitter crypto rich yt join my official telegram announcements channel because i post all the stuff that i do there and also if you're watching this on youtube we'll really come over to odyssey bit.ly slash crypto rich odyssey because i post more material there and i'm not censored there all right hey james how you doing hey rich good to see you mate long time see. long long time long 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 time because we used to do um fairly regular collaborations yeah, your definitely. channel and my channel talking about different projects and everything. But you're now setting something else up. Do you just want to say a little bit about just teeny weeny bit about yourself and your role in crypto? Yeah, I, I just I, I suppose the story starts there. And this is where we've got to now. So obviously, 2015, I got the bug, should we say, seeing Tony Robbins talking about this cashless society. Uh, and then sort of it wasn't until the early 2016 that I jumped in, you know, I bought this is going to sound crazy. I bought Ethereum at eight dollars and thought it was oh. the biggest risk I'd ever taken, uh, but obviously I was proven very wrong because uh, yeah. it was previously two dollars. I was thinking, oh, if it crashes, you know what goes up must come down. Uh, and before I knew it, you know, I was I was looking at my portfolio and it was you know 20, 30, 40 grand, and I put very little in. I was like, oh my god, I've, I've hit on something here. And then before I knew it, I became the expert locally uh, mm -hmm. on on a different medias and stuff and then everyone was inboxing me and that became a full-time job so i thought i need another outlet and that's when i started the youtube channel to sort of help people and i thought no one's going to watch any of my videos who's going to watch they don't even know i am i did my first video just doing my top 10 obviously bitcoin was was i was just saying this is going to be the daddy in like five years time uh, and um that got sixty thousand views in the first week and then i just thought oh my god i've, oh. I've, I've hit on something here there's value if people want to listen and then basically i've just reviewed a lot of coins uh, did some training courses um, that they did go on some pay for platforms, but very quickly I just put them on the channel because the whole point of the channel is to help people. Not, you know, I've seen other people charging three grams for the same course, and I just thought, nah, I'm, I'm not going to be that person. Here it is, it's free. Help yourself. This, it's not going to grow by ripping people off. It's going to grow by helping and sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we we ended up collaborating on a few things and. Um, I had a business called Crypto Rookies. That sort of fell apart, really. Not nothing to do on my side. And I just thought I need to step away for a bit. And I stepped away from the YouTube channel. I stepped away from crypto to some extent. I actually built a company in Australia called uh, Get My Refund, which is www.getmyrefund.com.au, bit of a mouthful, which uh, was, was basically attacking the banks. They'd rip people off. They'd uh, insurances, PPI. So if you're familiar with Gladstone Brooks, uh, I built basically the Gladstone Brooks Australia. It's the number one company over there, revenues of over three million and stuff. So I sort of diversified a little bit. However, mm -hmm. crypto is a powerful, powerful thing. Um, and quickly got, got drawn back in again because I've always wanted to do my own project. And we were going to do an exchange to start off with because my business partner actually builds exchanges for banks, uh, Singapore Exchange. He's also designed the um, the surveillance software. So he's a surveillance specialist. So he designed the first crypto surveillance for uh, the Abu Dhabi market. I can tell you now that he's working with some of the biggest exchanges on the planet because obviously all of these uh, regulations are coming in. So they're having to up their game and he's working with them. Uh, he's involved in lots of different things in terms of finance. Uh, and, and then, yeah, we we, we, we did a, we were doing a deal with a sort of a, an Asian bank of such that fell through. But on the back of that, there a whole piece of uh, technology that we didn't think was available to us was. So, most people know smart contracts in, you know, uh, in, in the usual way, something goes up, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we we actually, dis we found another way of using it as a messaging protocol, which is a very different use case versus what most people are using it for. Uh, and then we, we hooked up with some some real high level finance guys, uh, some people in the vest, vest and banking world, and and basically came up with a solution. Uh, and, and that 
makes part of the what the project that we're doing now. It's like I'm going to call it the cash cow. So that's what's going to provide the funds for the accelerator. Right. Uh, and then going to, I went to Lisbon last minute to, to get a grant for the project uh, at the NEAR conference. Um, anybody who hasn't been to the NEAR conference, fill your boots. It was brilliant. I mean, for 400 euros, it was four or five days. All the booze was free. Events were free. The booze at the events were free. The food, it was just nuts. It was nuts. Compared to some of these where you pay, I mean, we were going to get charged like four and a half grand to go to one in Dubai. And it was, it was pretty, it looked pretty poor, to be honest. Um, so yeah, great value for money, great atmosphere, great people. Hence why we're sort of building with them because we do think that is the the best technology out there at the moment, especially for what we want to do, sharding, right. uh, security and stuff like that. And and it was literally on the way back, uh, the whole um, the whole market crashed. And a project that I knew, they had all their funds in Celsius, mm. and I had some funds in Celsius as well. Not all, um, my bits everywhere, just in case. And and it all, it all fell apart and it just got me thinking, I think. And then they couldn't redo, they couldn't do anything with the projects. They didn't have any funds. Um, and we were so focused on the real-time payment company that it just got me thinking is that the real-time payment company makes ridiculous money. It's in FX, the FX market space. So for anybody who doesn't know about that, it's the largest traded, plan, uh, traded market on the planet. Mm. It does six point six trillion dollars a day, and that was when we did the research over a year ago. It now it's now doing seven point two trillion. Everything's falling apart in the world. Fuel prices up, everything's up. That market just keeps growing, keeps on growing, and it has done for many years. So it was a perfect uh, ground for us, really. And we had all the contacts because obviously, apart from myself, like people, I had someone say, "Oh, how can how can you get in the banks and stuff?" I said, "Because it wasn't my idea, mate. It's my friends, mm. my business partners." They are so high up in finance, like they literally knocked on the door of the, the largest investment bank um, to showcase the idea. And within a week, they're there. And then another week later, we're showcasing it to the head of FX, head of IT, um, you know, and getting the feedback from the customer. So we just a lot of projects out there. They build a project and go, oh, we've got this great idea. That'll work. And we'll give it a token. And off they go. They build this project and then they try and get traction. It doesn't work where I've always been of the mindset. Well, if that's my customer, let me go speak to my customer. Let me understand what their needs and things we can and we can't do, and then go away and build the best solution possibly can. And that's basically what we've done in that sense. Right. And this is the pro- this is leading on to this project being Walk W A L C dot com dot io W A L C dot io. So right. what does Walk stand for, and what is Walk? Uh, Walk stands for We All Love Crypto, and what what it was was just a bunch of friends who got together that were passionate about crypto. Um, that wanted to do something with with blockchain technology and create really, really good solutions. And what I'd seen in the marketplace is, especially going to Near, for instance, some very, very intelligent, smart people with great ideas. But as you as you know, like business isn't just about ideas. It's mm-hmm. about being able to run your finance, the legal, uh, being able to, you know, zero based budget and the management of those things. Uh, marketing, you know, I, I'm experts in certain areas. Mm-hmm. So especially like managing budgets and stuff, you know, I manage a 60 million pound budget now uh, for, for a very large chocolate company, should we say, uh, without giving too much away. And, and there's lots of, um, you know, I do some high level stuff there and I work with marketing. Some of the, uh, it's Cadbury Zorio. I look at, you know, help out with those brands and I do things with those brands. You know, we did Philadelphia recently, Eurovision. So I'm heavily into the marketing side. So I understand those things. So I can go and help other projects. I've got other people in the team, CFO of Anytime Gyms. So in terms of the finance side, He's absolutely bloody brilliant. 30, 40 years experience. And I think a lot of projects are lacking. They've got the energy and enthusiasm and ideas as young 20 year old kid, you know, young men, young women. Yep. Um, and they just need that little bit of help. And, yeah, and I can, I can see that from, from afar. And then the second problem is, is that, the, and we found this, you know, trying to get funding and everything else, is that the funding is so inconsistent. It's unbelievable. So what we, we get this bang and bust. In the crypto market, mm. which is which is you know it is what it is. The markets go up, they go down. But obviously, this goes down hard, and it goes up hard. And then you know, in the last one, we lost half the, the VCs. They just disappeared. Um, and then those that were still in got hit really hard. So there wasn't the money about to fund projects. So it got us thinking that we needed a real world business outside and removed from the crypto world, if you will, but actually utilizing blockchain technology so it still fits with the parameters and and, and the ethos of the project. But it actually sits outside. That project will just do this. It will just continue to make money. And then that allows us to then fuel the walk accelerator. And the main reason for that is we could do real-time payment and just disappear into the, the ether. Um, 
And it will be the largest use case of blockchain and smart contracts on the planet just because of the size of the market purely. But I get bored. I think you, you know me, Rich. I've got, you I've got could, to... You, man, you've got to have a game, something that you've got to be up to something, right? Okay, yeah. so Woke Accelerator. And we'll talk about why near in a moment, right? But but what do you mean Woke Accelerator? What does it do? So what we'll do is we'll obviously have three sort of forms of funding. So we've got grants. We've got, we'll do an ICO. And then we'll also have the real-time payment company where that will generate profits for us to then utilize within the Walk Accelerator. We'll then bring projects in. So we've got a couple of projects that we're doing ourselves, obviously the real-time payment company. We'll also build our own exchange. And the reason for that is because what we can do is we can put Simon up on a pedestal because he has created the standard within the banking world in terms of how exchanges are built and stuff. That's that's his job. So it makes only sense that we build one. And then when everyone else is going, oh, it's built by Dave and Bob, we, we've got Simon and we've got the rest of the team um, to, to be able to put on a pedestal and say, hey, this, this is built at a certain, like the standard, if you will. Uh, so that's going to be our second project, which will be the Walk Exchange. And there'll be some funky things with that where you can, uh, you can cross trade across other platforms. So a bit of arbitrage, if you will, but you can keep all your tokens in one place because that's always the thing. I'm sure you've got the same that you've got like tokens in different, unless you, you know, see use DEX as such, but you've got Binance, a bit, yeah, all these different types of accounts. And then on the back of that, we'll actually look for good projects, NFT wallets, wallets, um, DAOs, whatever it may be. They can join our accelerator. We'll take a percentage of the company. And when we take a percentage of the company, that's it. And then we will fund that project until success. So right. we're not just a part-time player. Oh, here's some money. Get started. Let's hope you do something. Now, if we bring a project in and there'll be a, a real high criteria in terms of who gets in and who doesn't, that's it. We're, we're invested then. We'll take a percentage of those profits uh, or percentage of the company. Then we'll fund them with money to start off with, get them going. We've got all the facilities so from marketing to legal. We've also got the entity already um in terms of the token, I'm not going to say what country it is because it cost me a lot of money to find out what country I needed to draw this in. Uh, people can, <laughs> if you join our social media, maybe I'll tell you and you can inbox me. But a um, little incentive there. But yeah, so we paid a lot of money to sort of find out how to do things properly. Yeah. And then when they're on board, yeah, they get full support. And then when they, but it's it's a little it's a little bit like, it's like an investment fund or something, you know, where you're it, supporting, coaching. Yeah, hundred percent. Providing the... services, providing funding for mm. what you consider to be good projects, and then you'll take a share of the proceeds when it comes to fruition. Exactly, and then based on that, there's a couple other things. So everybody or every project that joins the accelerator, they might have Bob token or whatever it may be. That goes. They need to adopt our token, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is we want to change the mentality of projects. So right now. You know, there's certain projects out there. They're like our project, nothing else. Blinkers on. Let's let's go. And if I'm honest, some of them are quite scammy. They don't really have anything. You know, meme coins, for instance. You know, why buy a car without an engine? It, it's pointless. It's pointless. No, no, it's, no, no, no. You have to buy a coin with a dog's face or a frog's face. <laughs> That's that was what Satoshi Nakamoto aspired. Yeah. That the it was, that, that was a dream, was wasn't it? So, <laughs> so um, what we're trying to do is, we're, you know, we're going to start with a mini metro and we want it to be a Ferrari, but it's going to take time. We need to build it. We need to, to work on it. So people will adopt the token. And then what that does is it, it changes the mindset of people where they're all working together now because they all own the token and we all want to see the token do well, not just for people that have invested or holding the token, but the projects themselves. So, and then what that does is change the dynamic within the walk accelerator. So, for instance, if we have an NFT wallet, that is the only NFT wallet. And for instance, with the exchange, we'll use that NFT wallet in the exchange. So we will create more utility for projects straight away because mm. we'll, we'll have those elements there. And then, for instance, we'll have already have our own exchange. Um, so we won't have another exchange in Accelerator. We'll be looking for different and variety of projects. So there's no competition within the ecosystem. So, so again, the ethos is that we're, we're all working together. We've all got different projects. And then what you'll see is a bit more cross-pollination. So you'll have one person from one project maybe go help somebody because they're all in the same game. We're all in it together. Right. Versus, you know, someone's working on their project to try and make it big, make as much money. They're not going to go help another project because there's nothing in it for them. Unless they're paying them or they're their best mate or something like that. That's just not going to happen. So it was really about changing the hearts and minds of, of how we do things in the crypto space because it's about building something together i know it sounds a little bit cheesy but it is about building something together than building just in, in silos really 
And that's the net if we can use the brand as well. But if you're going to use one token and the walk token, well, why not use, you know, um, an already existing token or a coin like Atom or Near or something? Why do you have to create your own? Well, we we control the value then. So with Near, I mean, right now, personally, I think it should be a lot higher, but it's 162, where if we have our own token, we're now locked into our own ecosystem. So we drive the news. So the idea would be is you bring in new projects, token goes up a little bit because you just added some more value. Right. Project launches. It, you know, So with every project that comes in, there's going to be five or six pieces of major news. Now you've got 10 projects. Now you've got 60 pieces of major news that would drive the price. Then on the back of that, which is another interesting concept that we designed was, so we take, let's say we take 25% to make things really easy for a project. That 25%, goes up to the mothership, which is walk. And what we do is we split that. So 25% will go back to the shareholders. You know, mm-hmm. Thank you for investing, et cetera, et cetera. 25%, and this includes all the money from the real-time payment company, will go buy the token back. So there's another mechanism. And all I've done is looked at the market and gone, what has worked, what didn't work? Binance, buying the token back, one of the best things I've ever seen. So that, And we've got a real-world business buying it back, not a crypto market uh, project. So it's not going to have these highs and lows. If anything, it's, it, when the market dips, actually I do. I would like to see our project keep going up because we keep buying back the token. So even in a bear market. Buying back and burning. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, there, there's, a, there's, a huge, there's a huge piece there. And then 50% of all the profits that we get back from the projects go back in and get recycled to fund more projects. So actually all we're doing is we're skimming a little bit off the top to give back to investors. And then the money keeps going back in to reinvest, keep buying back the coin, bring in more projects, make it even bigger, buy back even more coins uh, and just you know, grow that ecosystem massively. OK. And uh, this coin or this token is running on the near blockchain. Correct. OK. Now, tell us. A, I, I have covered near a long time ago um, and I did have near for a while and I don't have any now. And what I know about it, what I remember about it, it's very, very fast. It's mm. an EVM. So for people who don't know, it, it can run on the Ethereum. It's Ethereum virtual machine. It uses very – how explain it? It can run on the Ethereum network in a way. Like it makes it faster, like Polygon does, like um, Evmos does, you know, which other EVMs there are. There's quite a few. So NIR is an EVM. It's a fully decentralized project. I think they're working towards that. I okay, that's, okay. That's, that's the, the, the premise. So the, there's a couple of reasons why we use NIR. Um, and 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 it's it's a, it's a it's a total holistic thing rather than just one key element, if you will. So the first one is obviously the Ethereum fees, which is ridiculous. So it, it didn't it didn't it too low, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, only twenty only twenty dollars. I want to pay two hundred to send something. <laughs> oh, it's just nuts, nuts. So that 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 went out the window straight away. Yeah. Um, so that was a huge thing. So the fees were too much. So couldn't use that. Then obviously, you know, Ethereum is a 15 TPS and it's just not, it's just not fast enough. Uh, when you start looking at NIR, it's actually on par with Solana and some of the others out there. So that then makes sense. So it's like, you know, it's competing on speed uh, part, if you will. And then obviously the, that comes down to a lot of things like Doom Slug and they, they, they do things very, very differently in terms of how the, the, that protocol operates. But the, the real icing on the cake was the sharding for us. So in terms of if we're working, so our major project is obviously the real-time payment. We need a shard that is literally a private finance shard for the banks and mm-hmm. nobody else because they're not going to want anybody else on, on, say, the public chain, for instance. We still get all the benefits of the public chain and get the updates, but nobody else will use that shard. It will be our own private shard. We'll run it, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay. Now, before you go on, Jake, just say a little bit about what sharding is, because I have a vague notion, but I don't want anybody to rely on what I have to say about it. But and if you can keep it as in as simple, simple terms, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, the way I understand it is, you've got obviously Ethereum. It's all in blocks. It's all together, and it sort of builds up, and it just gets slower basically. Uh, and then with the sharding, it's literally a line off, and it's it's like um, extra storage in in the yeah. sort of the near terms, because a lot of the stuff on on near in, in terms of the fees bits because you're paying for storage and when you build a coin it's for storage um so it's very very different in how it operates but the sharding is just really to to keep them or maintain the speed of the change so it's not just backing up it's like oh right down here right. and you can offset as such in the simplest format there is some technical stuff especially if simon's here give you half an hour on it but 
Um, in, in the simplest terms, that's what it is. And it, it works perfectly for what we need. Right. And so that's the technical side of NIR, which is great. But then on the other side of NIR, you know, I know some few others have started doing this, but they had a grant program, which was really, you know, when the market was on its ass, you know, no, nobody wanted to help us. Uh, we obviously did a family and friends raise. And then we went to, we went with near basically. I mean, the guy that we had, uh, Mark Sugden, he 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 was an ex trader anyway, so he seen it and he was like, "Holy shit, guys, you got you got you got a unicorn here. Um, let me get you in." So, you know, before we knew it, I was in uh, uh, where was it Lisbon mm-hmm. conference and 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 Mark sorted it. Mark and David Garcia sorted it out for us, and we got our grant and and we've been building sort of ever since. Really, I mean, it's been a few challenges because it's quite complex and we we formulated it slightly, but for the better. Okay. No. Okay. So, so that's near, and then the walk token will run on the near blockchain, right. and, and just and we didn't say this, but near is a smart contract protocol. So it's programmable money in the way that Ethereum is, and Atom is, and Solana is, and Bitcoin isn't. Mm. Okay. Uh, so so you can give instructions and you can build applications on it. So so so, so walk is going to be a to- is going to have its own token on the near platform, and you're doing an ICO. Now, James. Who does ICOs? That's so 2017, which might in crypto might as well be like back with the dinosaurs. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know because you, you, we seen Pepe the other week and um, it just went off like a rocket. But they didn't um, do an ICO, did they? Was it an IEO? I, I don't think they did it. I thought they just released it. I thought that I, I mean, I'm not close enough. I, I tried to avoid those things. I mean, for us, we're trying to do an IEO. So uh, we're currently in talks with initial exchange offering. Yeah, so we're in talks with one of the big exchanges right now, um, a launch pad. You know, we're, we're to the final stages, basically. Uh, submitted all the paperwork, all the token uh, bits and pieces uh, to, to be able to, to, to launch on that. And the main reason for that is, again, thinking of the, the our, our, anybody who's investing, is that we don't we didn't really want to do it through just a website because mm-hmm. the amount of scams and stuff like that, it's actually, we want to direct to someone to a place which is trusted. And obviously, we have to go through a hell of a lot of due diligence and, uh, reviews and lots of things to be able to even get launched on there so it gives the project some credibility because this project isn't it's not a quick get quick rich scheme if you will that's not what this is about this is about long-term continuous investment uh, you know the, the money that we make from this isn't going in our back pockets and we're disappearing off down you know barbados or whatever um mm. it, it's literally to put it back in because it comes back to the name we all love crypto and we do we want to see this great big and there's a dynamic happening right now where the crypto is on its ass a little bit. These these little FTX boom down boom. It, it just creates a lot of distrust. Now right. I can tell you now. Obviously, working with the banks, we will be the first project in banks, hundred um, percent, and we should launch early twenty twenty four with that. And it's about blockchain technology being adopted by major institutions. I can also tell you, my current employer, because obviously I work while I'm doing this on the side. Um, I'm involved with some of the stuff that they're doing. They're now getting into and trialing some blockchain projects. Now, I don't believe they're using the right protocols and different things to be able to do that, but hence why I've been sort of dragged in to help out because it's very well known that I am the, the crypto expert within that business. So everybody's asking me, you know, oh, do you remember when you told me to buy Bitcoin in 2007? I said, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I have to try. <laughs> you said, no, it's a, it's a calm. I was like, okay. Uh, but we've all had that. We've all had that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm the expert at work by far. And, and, and obviously, it's, a, it's, it's one of the biggest snacking businesses in the world. So, um, the, you know, that's going to be a huge use case. You know, there's, mm. there's lots going on. And it's not the only one you've seen Coca-Cola, different different uh, businesses, especially, uh, you know, your household brands that you know now. Supply chain is massive in terms of this. And then the next level up from that is obviously their finance, their books. Uh, you know, if they have like things like trade terms and things like that, that can go into smart contracts. There's a massive, massive use case. But a lot of these businesses are very sensitive because of the reputation of crypto mm. in, in that sense. And this and this is where we this is where we're trying to cut that fine line with walk is we're actually focused, you know, we don't try to use the word crypto, we use the word blockchain. And actually we're trying to utilize blockchain technology rather than the crypto side because there's a there's a big difference the banks you talk blockchain cool okay we'll have a conversation you talk crypto get out of my office <laughs> you know, it, you, even if you mention pepe coin <laughs> oh mate it's throw you out throw you out kick you on the streets <laughs> but it's got a frog on its face <laughs> <laughs> we all remember crazy frog oh my God, that ringtone. Uh, okay um, 
So, see, so, okay, so you're doing an IEO, initial exchange offering, and then you're going to use the funds for generating the business, funding the business and developing right. it. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that you've said, and, and, and I've kind of worked it out from what you've been saying, because you're working with all these banks and stuff, and because the environment is going towards regulation, you're going to be out to be, you know, regulatory compliant. Mm. Uh, now, and now one of the things I want, as a warning to people, because it's also something you said about um, it's long term. It's a long term game because people people come into crypto to make money. I mean, James, I I have paid off my mortgage. It wouldn't have happened as a social worker on my social mm. worker salary. It wasn't going to happen. And I'm you know interested. I'm in here because I so I can make money and provide for my family. Um, but I've also learned that patience pays in the crypto space. It really, mm. really does. You I, you were you've been in since 2015. I bought Bitcoin in 2013, mate. My first. I did. Now the wow. mistake I made was the same as you. I didn't buy enough, <laughs> <laughs> and I bought Ethereum at three dollars, and I didn't buy enough, right? <laughs> right. But you know, you and I could have divested ourselves of those assets in yeah. 2017, or you know, when there was the pump, and then we wouldn't have got the returns that we've got over time. So patience pays, and mm -hmm. something for people to bear in mind is that cryptocurrency projects, blockchain projects, like all businesses, fail. You know, some are scams because people see an opportunity to make quick money and disappear. That happens. Some are shams, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, for whatever reason, the project just fails. It doesn't get going. You know, no dishonesty necessarily, but it just doesn't work out. And then some are, are doing really, really well, like Binance, like uh, like a few others that are just a bit slowly, 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 slowly building, 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 building. And um and then you've got to ride with the rough with the smooth. That's how it is. And that's the, that's the sort of ethos of the accelerator. So we know that, you know, let's say we bring in 20 projects. Not all those projects are going to be the next Binance or whatever it may be. Uh, so, yes, some will fail. Some, some will fail. Some time to give a return. But we can absorb that because yeah. we have other projects that will do well. So we can absorb that effect. And also because we have funding that comes in, which is not directly affected by the crypto market. Again, we can absorb it again. And you know, you can pick and choose your investments. Most projects don't actually need that much investment. So I'll give, I'll give you a great example. Like just back in the day where projects raised like uh, was it 10x? 10x raised 80 million dollars. And then but it's gone. And 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 then it doubled. The market doubled. And then uh, I can't think of his name now, um, the Austrian or German guy. He then made them sell, which was good, you know, good. So they ended up with 160 million dollars. They couldn't even launch a card. And I know another project that did exactly this. No, they launched a card, but they, had a, they fell into some issues and ran out of money. But they did that on 800 grand. So this whole fallacy of, oh, you need lots of money. It's not. It's, it's resources. You know, I'll give you a quick snippet. For us to launch the largest use case of blockchain on the planet will cost us six million pounds. Wow. You know, and that's that's taking you know, very reserved salaries, um, you know, just zero base budget in. What do you actually need to get this done? Mm. And if you if you break it down, and that's part of our whole ethos. So when so for all, we'll, we'll pay our C level team. So when projects, we probably only need to pay one or two people in the project. That's probably most of the money that they need, and maybe a little bit for hardware building. The rest is absorbed by war. So actually, you're not controlling the money, but you don't have to give so much away in that yep. sense to be able yep. to get the project started. And then when they get going, then they get the rewards. Yeah, no, I get and and no, I get it, and I know was it um, how much did EOS raise? Two billion, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a ridiculous amount. And where mm. is EOS now, right? And ten X, by the way, I did have a ten X card, and I did. Uh, the project is has, is folding. It's, mm. it's uh, at least it? I've got a scraper for the car when it's icy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then the other thing is um, the walked token sounds to me a little bit like a hedge fund. Or a, or a sort of diversified investment fund. Because if I got the walk token, mm -hmm. and let's say there are now 10 projects within the accelerator program, and let's say three of them do really, really well, three of them crash and burn, and then the other four are just middle, you know, just piddling along, not doing anything, they're just flatlining, but they're still going along. Mm. Then my my investment is protected be, be through the diversification strategy, and then exactly. all the time on a regular basis. Did you say how often every month or every three months you're buying the tokens? The Probably every three months we'll do that. Okay. So quarterly quarterly results will come in. We'll bank 
the profits for those quarters, and then we'll do the the, the, the buybacks and everything. Right, you buy back and then you burn, which means that the value of the token will will keep going up, which is what's happened with with Binance. Exactly. And, and then the other thing, I think, I mean, we are at the, I think we're at the point where we're tur- at the end of the bear market, turning into the bull market. That's where I think we're at because it times in with Bitcoin's halving schedule historically, but but you know we're above the fifteen sixteen thousand pound lows dollar lows that we've had here and this is probably the best time to get into crypto because normally what happens you know when it was it late 2017 everybody was coming in oh we got this project we got this project we got this project when the prices are really really expensive and then they they take in a lot of money when the price of the bitcoin and ethereum is really really high and then the price crashes in the in the bear market straight after and they the amount they took in is now worthless it's lost a lot of value but that's not the case right now, I think. There, well, there, there's there's a few reasons, and you, you sort of touched on one is we're launching now because we do believe the market is on return, which is good mm-hmm. because you can go in, offer it, and the token goes up. It's really good vibes for the for the project. The other thing is, and most people don't know this, so this might be a um, something new for the channel. Rich is uh, obviously Simon, uh, my business partner, is very connected. He does lots of stuff for the FCA. There is some regulations coming. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to be able to launch a token very, very soon unless you have FCA people littered throughout your business. Uh, sorry, yeah, FCA qualified people throughout your business. So even to do the marketing, to put a tweet on, you're going to have to have someone who is FCA regulated to do that. Now, we, in, and obviously the real-time payment business, that all has to be FCA regulated. I've seen, I've seen the salaries that these guys are on. Astronomical. You've got probably, we've probably got six or seven people that we need so there's an fca lawyer we've got people in new york obviously we need them in all the, like, the hubs i mean the salary bill on that is like a million alone just mm-hmm. for those guys but you need them right that that's coming so the, the all these little projects that think oh we're just gonna we're just gonna launch because now, now they're gonna be handing out prison sentences um how many of you actually do that the, you know how many bankers have gone to, to prison very very few but i think they'll, they'll make a big example of people in crypto so hence Oh, the bankers! The bankers will want to send the bitcoiners to prison for sure, <laughs> <laughs> hugely, and then try and think their wallets. Um, so, yeah, there's there's huge regulations going. So, we could be one of you know, I know the ICOs is a, as a dying art, if you will, but we could be one of the last projects to potentially launch in that manner. We're lucky because even if it changes, we've still got FCA people in our business. We'll ju- I'll just get the lawyer guy to do everything, um, but a lot of people won't because they're. They're not fintech, you know, our other business, obviously fintech. They're not in that world. So they don't naturally and, need And they won't necessarily people. have the, it means they have to raise more funding. Oh, massively. To get going, right? And then you're, with your FCA in-house expertise and experience, you can offer that to the projects that you take on in the accelerator, I assume. Well, well the thing is they don't need to launch, do they? So the token's already out there. Oh. All they're doing is they're coming in and they're they're just being part of the family, if you will. So right. we, we don't need to go through any of that. So we've designed it that way because we, we've known about this for some time. We just haven't, you know, this is the first for you, uh, but we, we just haven't put it out there because we, we're just so focused on what we're doing right now. Right. Even though it, it probably is a huge piece of news, we've probably shared it and, and all the rest of it, but you have to be quite sensitive with some some of the stuff you can and can't share. Now, I do believe that is in the, in, in the space, so you can go and see that some in different uh, locations. Uh, but in the main, most people won't have a clue about it and then they'll end up doing it and then they'll pay the consequences unfortunately so there's a lot of changes coming so and hence why we've done it that way because we can bring projects in they're really good they don't they don't need to go through all the other stuff our token is already fully regulated Mm -hmm. Uh, we've sandboxed for two years so we are absolutely fully regulated and at the end of those two years we'll we'll, 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 what's called grandfather into the fca necessarily probably don't need have to but we're going to do it anyway because we want everything to be absolutely on the mark right no questions okay, we don't we, we don't need no pre- xrp yeah which <laughs> yes which offers protection to those that participate in the ieo exactly now, when is the ieo how can people find out about it um hopefully uh end of july is is our date uh that could move quite you know could be moving into august it depends on a couple of things right now mm-hmm. uh in terms of the exchanges um it, the best way to get hold of us is through our telegram 
or visit the website and you've got all the different social medias there that you can follow. Uh, but Telegram is definitely the best place to get us. And there's also a few things that we're working on in terms of a marketing. So I think, you know, Rich, I have, I've been doing cage fighting for over 20, 20 plus years now. Mm -hmm. I'm trained with some pretty high level champions, should we say. Um, we're, we're in talks with, we've already pulled out in our first cage fight. He's getting sponsored for, uh, it's Mo. He's fighting on cage warriors. So he's going to be fighting for the, uh, I think it's the lightweight amateur title. Mm -hmm. So he's one of our new sponsored fighters. Uh, and we're going all the way up to the pros. So obviously at Renegade Gym, there's a load of guys there that I know and train with. So we're, I'm going to sponsor those guys. And the reason for that is you can sponsor these guys and it doesn't cost, you know, it's not costing the earth, shall we say. And you get your brand all across their chest on their shorts and you get replays and lots of different things when they win. And it's on UFC Fight Pass, which is our perfect audience in terms of demographics. You know, uh, BBC iPlayer, it will mm -hmm. be on. We're going to be everywhere. Uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that we do with football at work. You know, I want to look at some stuff once we get the funds together, especially through RTP, is actually sponsor a premiership football team. So obviously at Cadbury's, we sponsor, we do a lot of the stuff with Cadbury's. Mm -hmm. Cadbury's FC, a uh, huge, huge thing. So obviously I've got the contacts there that I can tap into in terms of, and, and the thing is this, it, it's not going to be Manchester United or, or anyone like that. I'm not going to go waste 80 million like Tezos and all the rest of it. But if yeah. you get, so, so when you get the new teams promoted up, you can get a full season for 3 million quid. Wow. So 4 million quid maybe. So that, I think, coupled with the other stuff that we're doing. And the reason I would do that is because you've got 60 million people in the UK and it's something like half the population watch football. Yeah. So they've got eyes on you all the time. And yet it's not Manchester United, but when you play Manchester United, it's going to be seen. Yes, 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 yes. Very good. Very good. OK. And then have you got any accelerator projects lined up already? Yes, we've been talking to quite a few people. Uh, we've got uh, a potential wallet that is uh, very much like MetaMask. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, some Those guys, uh, Christian and Daniele, they... They had a project called Aim On. They're the ones that did the, the, the card for 800 grand. Now they've got this, uh, Christian's been working on the wallet for a, for a while. Um, we're talking to some guys called Ample, which is, best way I can describe it, it's like Netflix on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Those guys, have, um, actually one of the lads is on uh, renovations with Jeremy Renner. He, he helps build this music van. Uh, it's on Disney Plus. So you can actually see, it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. They're all up there. Um, so yeah, and we've got a few of the projects um, on the sidelines and again if there's projects out there that want to want to touch base with us again get in our telegram send us the white paper we'll, we'll start reviewing those things so you know the big pro the focus is get real-time payments up and running get the exchange running and then that gives us all the runway to then invest in in lots of different projects and support them and and, and build the space and make it trustworthy and make it a, a safer place to play if you will because mm. like you were saying before this this whole bang and bust stuff. I don't like it because you get the, the the sometimes the influencers to some extent. They get in, they hype it, they hype it. They're in early, they're making all the money, and then all the followers get in, everybody else, and then they get stung, and then they don't want to play in crypto anymore. And I've seen it. I, I know yeah. a couple of guys that went in for you know that they got money to spend, like, but they went in for uh, I don't know maybe hundred, maybe two hundred grand. They bought some Bitcoin, Ethereum at the heights, and then. Now, when you talk to them about, oh, now, nah, mate, now nah, I'm not interested. It's shit. It's shit. It's not. You just you just bought into the hype and you bought at the wrong time. But in general terms, it's a good space. First, you need to be early. Two, you need to be patient, like you said, Rich. And also, you need to invest in projects that have an engine and not because if they ain't going anywhere, because of the fad or whatever, and don't yeah. put in any more than you can afford to lose. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, don't don't risk it. Like. Oh, I'm trying to think of the project now, but I've seen stuff like people have gone in with like 400 grand and talking about killing themselves on Twitter. And it's just like, that doesn't sit well with me. No. Like if, if our coin makes a couple of cent every couple of months or something like that, yeah, happy days. Um, I don't want it to do like a dollar on the first you know, month or so and then just dive straight back down again. Does nothing. A couple of people will get rich off that, not many. And generally it's the whales. Yeah. Um, you know, th th this project is about encompassing everybody to some extent. And as long as people are patient and everything else, then it will work. And, and we're going to implement some staking programs and different things. So, there's, again, lots of different bits of news that will happen throughout the, the life cycle to, to really drive value and scarcity and all those different types of things. Okay. And then uh, people can stay in touch by 
you know, I have the links to the website and also the Twitter and the Telegram group and people can find out that way. Is there anything else you want to let us know, James? Uh, no, I suppose the main thing is, is that we're, we're doing a funding round right now. So there's equity and tokens on, on the line. So if you do, if you are interested in having some equity as well as tokens, then you can contact us at the Telegram group. That round does close in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, then, then we're locked and loaded then, ready for the Great. IEO. Great. OK, well, listen, thank you so much. I look forward to having you uh, back on again at some point soon and thank you for reaching out really really do appreciate it and anybody who's watching you have any comments or questions put them in the description below but also go to joe check out this website do your own due diligence and between now and i see you next please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits this is crypto rich and crypto james signing out all the best bye-bye cheers guys